Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today's video is a continuation of a series in which I look back at some of the biggest draft busts in NBA history and try and figure out why exactly they were drafted so high. Previously we've done Anthony Bennett as well as Hashim Thabit and today we're doing another big guy and it's why did Kwame Brown go first overall in the 2001 NBA draft. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA, then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. Okay, so as we go back to 2001, it's important to understand where the Washington Wizards and the NBA was as a whole and how that led to Kwame Brown being selected first overall. So the Wizards were coming off of a 19 win season and really the only building block that they had on the roster that would be on the roster the following season was Rip Hamilton. So it was pretty clear that they needed some kind of big guy to compliment him. And at the time, obviously they had Michael Jordan in the front office. And so they really kind of narrowed down their choices to a handful of talented big men at the top of this draft class. Kwame Brown, Tyson Chandler, Eddie Curry, and Pau Gasol were all really talented bigs that were you know, expected to be selected at the top of this class. And interestingly, none of them played college basketball. There were three high school players and then the one international player as well in Gasol. And ultimately, the Wizards and then executive Michael Jordan decided that Brown was the right pick, making him the first player ever to be selected number one overall straight out of high school. And unfortunately, things just didn't work out for Kwame Brown. Among this draft class, he finished 20th in total points, 14th in total rebounds, and 18th in games played. His best year in the league was in his third season when he averaged a little bit less than 11 points and eight rebounds per game on just a 25 win Wizards team. And he'd go on to play for seven different teams across 12 seasons in the NBA. But later on, we'll talk about why exactly things didn't work out for Kwame Brown. Let's begin by talking about what made the Wizards select him above all these other talented players in the 2001 draft class. So as we look back at the ESPN high school rankings at the time, Kwame Brown was the second best high school player in the country in that class according to ESPN at the time. He was a six foot 11 big guy that was quick, that was athletic, had a developing touch from the mid range as well, and looked like exactly the type of big guy that you would wanna have in the NBA at the time. Remember, this is a time in the NBA where bigs were still one of the more dominant forces in the entire league, and especially as it related to team success and winning championships, the mindset was that you pretty much had to have a really good or a dominant big to win a title. And that was true for the previous season in which nine of the top 20 scores in the entire league were big guys or moving forward past this draft as well because every single year from 1999 to 2008, every single NBA champion either had Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Garnett, or Tim Duncan on the roster with the exception of the Detroit Pistons who had Ben Wallace and Rasheed Wallace. So no matter what, it seemed like you absolutely had to have one of the better big guys in the entire league on your team to win a title. And so the mindset was maybe Kwame Brown can be that guy. And I know it might seem strange now to think about it like this, but at the time, people really thought that Kwame Brown was an outstanding prospect and some of the comparisons that were being made for him might surprise you. You can look back now at NBA draft.net their NBA comparison for Kwame Brown was Kevin Garnett let's see what they had to say strengths like Garnett Brown has freakish athleticism already bulkier than Garnett and could turn into more of a Weber type post player being Chris Weber very graceful running the floor tremendous leaping ability passes and handles extraordinarily well for a six foot 11 player may still be growing obviously he's still so young touch on shots is excellent and should only improve post game is solid very good shot blocker and that was a comparison that honestly kind of tracked if you were scouting Kwame Brown back in 2001. He was an athletic, long, quick, big guy with developing skills and a developing touch either at the basket or in the mid range. And Garnett at this point at the 2001 draft had already made multiple all NBA and all defensive teams and would go on to win an MVP a couple of seasons later as well. So when you're comparing someone to Kevin Garnett, especially a high school player, not only is that high praise, but it obviously bodes well for Kwame Brown. And it shows you how highly thought of he was back then even though now a lot of people just think of him as this huge bust and that was pretty much the entire reasoning for selecting brown at the time the wizards felt like they needed a big guy the league was in a point in which you pretty much needed a big guy to win a title and the wizards and mj liked brown better than curry chandler or gasol who again were the top four picks in this class so the wizards decided to take him number one overall and as i said things just didn't go well 
as a rookie, he's of course just 19 years old. Michael Jordan decides to come back out of retirement. There's all these different expectations on him as the first high school guy to be picked first. And the team is good, but not great in his rookie season. Then the following year, the same thing with MJ still there. In his third season, Jordan leaves and the team is worse, but that's Kwame Brown's best year statistically. But by the fourth season, he plays only 42 games, gets traded to the Lakers and then the Grizzlies, and then just kind of falls off after that. And the supporting cast in Washington outside of Jordan really weren't that great either. You've got young Rip Hamilton and Jerry Stackhouse, who were good players, but maybe not great complimentary options for a big guy. And same thing with Larry Hughes and Gilbert Arenas. Talented players, but maybe not exactly who you want to have around a high school kid that's just now coming into the NBA as a big guy. And now you can kind of start to see how things would go wrong for Kwame Brown because the structure in Washington as a franchise wasn't great. They're pretty much riding only on the fact that MJ is there, not only as an executive, but now as a player. The fact that MJ comes back and plays with the guy that he really advocated for to select with the first overall pick is obviously very interested in his development. Those are not great situations for anybody, but especially a player that is coming straight out of high school and is just 19 years old as a rookie. And as I said, the teammates that he had were not ideal for a developing young big. And of course, there is the MJ stuff and the rumors that he was so hard on Kwame Brown that he ruined his confidence and that he even went so far as to make him cry a handful of times. And Brown has since come out publicly and said that he never actually cried. Obviously, Jordan was tough on him, but some of the stuff has been exaggerated a little bit. But regardless, I think it's clear that for a player as young and not ready to handle all the expectations of being the number one overall pick as Brown was, playing alongside Michael Jordan who selected him and then playing with them was not an ideal situation at all. And when I say that he couldn't really handle the expectations of being the number one overall pick, I'm not just making that up. That's not speculation. There are actually quotes from who, what would have been his college coach in Billy Donovan at the University of Florida in a book written by Jonathan Abrams. It says, coach, I don't want to do this, Brown confided in Donovan shortly after informing him of his choice to go to the NBA rather than play in college. When Donovan asked why, Brown responded, if I'm the number one player taken, I know the expectations. I'm so far away from being the number one pick, I'm not ready for this. And so that shows a kid that not only, you know, is afraid of the expectations of being the number one overall pick, but also isn't fully confident in his own abilities as a basketball player related to some of the other players in that draft class, even admitting to himself that he didn't think that he was worthy of being the number one overall pick, but also of a guy that he didn't want to go to the NBA right away. He wanted to go to college and reluctantly decided to declare for the draft because of all the, the financial positives that can come out of that situation. But ultimately, Brown should have ended up going to college. He should have gone to Florida for a year or two or three years or however many it would have taken. And maybe his situation would have ended up differently. And I think that is really one of the lessons of the Kwame Brown story is there are some players that come into the league that the, the situation around them really isn't all that critical. And they just, they have everything together. They're so talented, they're so skilled that they're gonna figure it out regardless. And Kwame Brown was a talented player on the basketball court but the other things just weren't quite there for him yet. And you wouldn't expect them to be as an 18 and 19 year old kid. The players that it is that are able to make that jump and be good immediately and, and deal with all the pressures of the NBA, guys like LeBron James, guys like Kevin Garnett, they're not normal, right? Kwame Brown was just a normal 18 and 19, really talented basketball player. And he needed the proper circumstances around him. He needed to not play with Michael Jordan straight away. He needed to, you know, maybe have his confidence be built up a little bit. He needed to play alongside players that complimented him a little bit better, maybe set him up a little bit better, built up his confidence. He needed to play in a structure and an organization that was going to focus on developing him. And unfortunately, that just didn't happen. And whether it's those circumstances or being able to go to college for a year and not coming to the NBA straight out of high school, he just wasn't ready for the NBA. And it's unfortunate because, as I said, one of the kind of lost parts of this whole narrative around Kwame Brown was that he was such a talented high school player. And he, there, there were these comparisons to Kevin Garnett, and he had the athleticism and the skill and the strength. And obviously, there were things that he could have done better to improve his situation. And nobody forced him necessarily to go to the NBA straight away. But if he could go back and change certain things, I think that there's a very, very successful NBA career 
path for Kwame Brown had he been put in the right circumstances in the right situation and some high school players some college players they don't need those Kwame Brown was one of those players that needed it and unfortunately that is why he ended up failing even though he was worthy of being the first overall pick at the time when you go back and read some things uh, it just it didn't work out for him for really a variety of reasons some that he could help and some that he couldn't and yeah there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching once again my name is Tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and I'll see you all next time